So tarsal metatarsal joints and Lis Frank injury, this is a little bit of a, a tricky topic. Um, <clears throat> it's really important and it's, it's especially relevant in the ER setting not to miss this injury. So that's one of the things I wanna focus in on this morning. We'll talk about injury mechanisms, focus on anatomy, and then uh, especially spend time on imaging and scrolling through a few cases. So again, a common injury in sports and in American football, um, we see a fair number of these types of injuries. It can happen with hyperdorsiflexion or plantar flexion of the midfoot. Probably more often see it with that dorsiflexion type injury because it's mainly along the plantar surface of the foot that gets injured. Um, here you see an athlete getting landed on and the foot's like dorsiflexing here. Here's a patient injuring it with uh, the brake pedal and a dorsal directed force. Here's a high velocity injury where the patient you know, jumps off a building or something like that and lands on the foot and um, you know, gets, um, disrupts that articulation there. So there can be either high velocity injuries like motor vehicle crashes, fall from height, or low velocity things where you may even see in football, somebody gets landed on, it's this very slow but heavily loaded situation where you can tell that they just um, injure their foot in a low velocity manner. Um, some of these slides I got from Kate and modified them a little bit, so I wanna give her credit for that. Um, bony anatomy wise, it's sort of interesting because the if you look at the arch of the foot from medial to lateral, the dorsal aspect of these metatarsals are wider than the, the plantar aspect. And then it's kind of like these Roman arches. So it, it provides a lot of bony stability in that sense to keep the arch of the foot. The other thing that we don't focus on much, but it's important is that if you look at the second metatarsal base, it comes a little more proximal than the first. And so it interlocks a little bit into the uh, cuneiforms here, and that also portends some stability. But the main thing we'll focus on is the ligaments, and it can get a little bit confusing, so we'll try to drill down on what's really important here in a minute. But um, along the, the uh, tarsometatarsal junction and across the metatarsals, there's dorsal, uh, there's, there's interosseous, and there's plantar ligaments across all levels here. We'll focus on the first, second uh, ray in just a second. But there's actually no intermetatarsal ligament between the first and the second uh, metatarsal. And that's where this blue ligament, Lis Frank ligament, comes in. And we'll look at that in some detail. So these are uh, nice 3D renderings from uh, the Primal Pictures series that you can get through the Lane Library for, for free. Um, so here's a dorsal rendering of the foot and showing all these different little ligaments connecting uh, the midfoot and uh, hind foot here. Too many to even think about a name, but plantar, we'll look at it in a little bit more detail here. You have the cartilage and then you have these different ligaments. And so this is the medial cuneiform here, first metatarsal base, second, third metatarsal. And so things are named according to their attachment site. So this would be the cuneiform C1, and this is metatarsal number one. So this ligament here could be called the C1-M1 ligament, and then this ligament here could be called the C1-M3 ligament. And so we won't get into excruciating detail about those, but that's the important kind of naming convention. So this is along the plantar aspect of the foot. Here's the dorsal aspect. I'm not really able to show the interosseous part, which we'll show in a different plane of section. Okay, so plantar aspect, um, now things get a little bit confusing because what happens when we're looking at MRIs is you're trying to find these ligaments here, but there's other things cruising by that tend to look like ligaments. So this blue structure is tibialis posterior tendon that's coming down from around the ankle and it sends some slips to insert on first metatarsal, third metatarsal. And so if you're not careful, you can confuse tendon for ligament. Similarly, they Perineus longus comes over from the lateral side of the foot, goes underneath and has uh, insertions on the base of the first metatarsal here, maybe in the cuneiform. So that ligament we're trying to find is this thing in here and this gets very confusing where to look for it. All right, and there's other plantar musculature. So we'll come back to that. And I think it's easy, fairly easy to sort out just 
how to uh, stay out of trouble there. So the radiography here is something you should look at on pretty much every foot you look at and uh, to get used to the alignment of the medial cuneiform, first metatarsal base, and the second with the intermediate cuneiform. On the AP view, you can't really tell the alignment laterally. That's why we have this 30 degree oblique view. So here the lateral cuneiform, third metatarsal base, these should nicely line up. They should be almost perfectly aligned and the fourth and the fifth with the cuboid. Now you can have little angles of things like little tiny angle like here, but you shouldn't have shifting. These are commonly missed injuries. Um, so this is a positive case here where the second metatarsal is not lining up appropriately with the intermediate cuneiform. And there's a little flake of bone right in here that could be called the so-called flake sign. So again, similar to the syndesmosis injuries, it may be needed, uh, necessary to get weight bearing views to assess this, exam under anesthesia. These are really painful injuries, so um, exam under anesthesia may be necessary to look for subluxation. So that's one sign to look for, subluxation, malalignments, the flake sign, commonly associated with metatarsal neck fractures or proximal metatarsal fractures. Don't really see any here except that little flake. Uh, you can get compression fractures of the cuboid and diastasis of the cuneiforms. So here's some, here's some examples from our, our collection. So this is a pretty obvious injury, right? Tarsal metatarsal fracture, malalignment, like there's too much width here. This is all fractured and comminuted. This one's almost floating here and shifted laterally. So here's cuboid over here. The fourth and fifth should be articulating with the cuboid. Here's another one that's pretty obvious where the first metatarsal is actually shifted laterally. What about this one? Well, if this comes through the ER, it's like, well, I don't really know, maybe, but there's a little bit of malalignment between the second um, metatarsal base and the intermediate cuneiform here. So it's enough to be suspicious. And um, hopefully if the patient's got injury in that area and we see something suspicious, then orthopedics gets involved early to help further assess it. CT definitely plays a role. And usually this is a role that's played if it's like, well, questionable fracture there um, or a known fracture. And it's like, let's assess things better in terms of the bony anatomy and alignment. It's really important to do oblique reformations with CT. So here's short axis, first metatarsal down to the fifth here in the plane of the foot. <clears throat> so we can see that malalignment of the second with the intermediate cuneiform. Different case showing a little fracture fragment here where Lisfranc's ligament insert, so that's important. Um, more complex injury here with a cuboid fracture. And then in sagittal reformations, looking at dorsal malalignment. So here this metatarsal is dorsally dislocated relative to the cuneiforms and seen on 3D there. So again, oblique reformation. So here's um, medial comminuted fracture, the medial, uh, medial the first metatarsal, second metatarsal fractures, third metatarsal, all compatible with Lisfranc tarsal metatarsal type injury. One other CT scan here, this one's showing um, comminuted fracture involving the cuboid here and all these fracture fragments and malalignments at the tarsal metatarsal joint with comp complicated fracture of the second metatarsal with some dorsal displacement. Okay, so let's get back to the uh, ligamentous anatomy and we'll try to find those on, <clears throat> on MRI. So between the, the first and second rays, the medial cuneiform or C1 and the second metatarsal or M2, um, you have dorsal, interosseous and plantar ligaments. Those, those are the, the three most important ones. The blue one is what we traditionally think of as Lisfranc's ligament itself. And that goes from medial cuneiform to second metatarsal base. And that should be pretty easy to pick up on MRI. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this. So here's, here's short axis axial, and then we're gonna go through the coronal images. And this one is fairly normal. There's a little bit of edema in it. And if anything, actually the ligament's a little bit on the thick side, so it makes it a little bit easy to see. It's kind of the large print version of this ligament. Um, here we are dorsal. You often don't see much dorsally in terms of the ligament on the, um, on the coronal views. And if we come to about the mid level of the, the foot here, so mid in terms of dorsal to plantar, 
we should start to see the Lisfranc ligament proper here. And um, so here we go, um, like right in here. <clears throat> so first metatarsal, medial cuneiform, thick, dark ligament going from here to the metatarsal base. That is Lisfranc ligament proper. That's the interosseous one. That's the probably the most important one. Now, in this player, you can see some other somewhat thickened ligaments. There's a little bit of edema around, but there's no discrete disruption of the ligaments. And then as we go more plantar, remember I showed the slide showing how complicated things tend to get. And so if I scroll through here, if I come more plantar, see this structure coming across, that's the perineus longus coming across. Um, there's other things cruising along like the tibialis posterior here. What I would say in terms of trying to find the uh, plantar ligament uh, itself is that if you find the interosseous ligament about midway through, then we're going to go just a little bit more plantar, and the interosseous one is probably a little less steep than the than the uh, than the interosseous one. So we're going to go here, and you see about the angle that this one is at, and then we're going to go down just a little bit more, right about there, and see that's a little more horizontally oriented. That's like the plantar aspect of the of the Lisfranc ligament complex there. It's pretty subtle there, maybe a little bit right there as well. Now don't don't sweat details on this because it's pretty advanced stuff as far as this goes. And um, generally what we do is when we look at these cases, we look at um, obviously the big picture. We look for things like bone marrow edema, like he's got some here, bone contusions. Can you see fractures on MRI? Um, do we see capsular edema? Do we see any discrete disruption of structure of uh, ligamentous structures? Here's little bits of edema. And we try to decide, is this a low-grade injury, high-grade injury, or, um, or somewhere in between? <clears throat> so I showed this before, dorsal, interosseous, and plantar. So here's dorsal, interosseous, and plantar. And so if we look in this plane, what we're going to do is scroll through the coronals here as a reference. So this is Liz Frank's ligament here. And as I come back proximally here, so if we get to the, <clears throat> the medial cuneiform here, so that's this structure here, what we should expect is to see Lisfranc's ligament cruising from here across, okay? And I'm pointing with the arrow because it'll then record um, on the screen better. So right in here, there's Lisfranc's ligament, okay? Medial cuneiform to second metatarsal base. <clears throat> and I even struggle to find this this plantar component. It's probably this tissue like right in here as I go back towards the, the uh, medial cuneiform. You can kind of see something connecting across there. Okay, see bone contusion, but alignment's normal. Nothing's discreetly disrupted, okay? <clears throat> now, things can be made as confusing as you want to, and I, I don't think this paper is necessarily confusing, but it's sort of daunting to look at because I had them um, illustrated all these ligaments at three different levels. And uh, so dorsal, interosseous, and plantar. The important thing to realize is that if you look dorsally, these are illustrated as little thin lines here, like cuneiform one, two, two, three. The thinner they are, the less important they are. So don't worry so much about dorsal. The interosseous ones are more important and the plantar ones are really um, <clears throat> as important. And especially what we worry about is the, the medial part of the foot. So C1, M2, first and second metatarsals, and so on. So, so if you're looking for specific ligaments, it's this interosseous C1, M2, and there's an M3 component as well. Sorry, that, sorry in, the, in the interosseous one, it's usually just C1, M2. It's more plantar where you have C1, M2, M3 components. So those are the really key ones to be looking for. So we'll look at a couple other cases to see if we can, we can find those. So, so this is the same athlete that I just showed a minute ago, but I put the T1 up next to the, the T2 fat suppressed, and this helps get oriented um, <clears throat> for the anatomy. So I won't spend too much time on it, but we use these T1 weighted images to look at the, the bony anatomy and get oriented. And here's the medial cuneiform, second metatarsal base. So that's that interosseous Lisfranc ligament. And they go a little bit more plantar to try to find the, the plantar um, C1, M2 ligament there and not to be confused by these other tendons going by. 
So this is a different athlete, okay? So this was a wide receiver, professional athlete who had one of these low velocity type injuries. And we're gonna try to find his Lisfranc ligament here. So if I come back dorsally here, um, you can see along the dorsal cap. So there's a lot of edema around just on this reference scan, a lot of edema around the midfoot. This is about where Lisfranc's ligament should be in terms of the dorsal plantar level. So as we get to here, <clears throat> It's like a really good example of at least partial tearing where you have the medial cuneiform, second metatarsal base, and this line right there, that's going right through the ligament there, okay? So that's that's tear. And the next section down also shows like heterogeneity, some partial tearing. Um, and then we get down to the plantar aspect and trying to find this plantar component. And it should be here between C1, like M2 and M3. And it's all this heterogeneous tissue right in there. It should be nice and like linear and striated looking, but that's like definitely partial tearing injury of the plantar component of Lisfranc's ligament complex. So that's that's abnormal. Again, an example of where if you go more plantar, you see the first metatarsal, this tendon coming across here, that's the perineus longus coming across. Okay. <clears throat> now, again, we look at things like uh, radiographs, look at alignment. His alignment was normal. He had a little bit of bone contusions. Um, he didn't really have widening and he was he was treated conservatively for several weeks. I think he was out for about eight weeks and then was coming back and was doing doing reasonably well his first game back, but then unfortunately got re-injured in the same kind of mechanism and ended up um, having to have surgery for this. So again, this point is just to show that we're looking for these ligaments here, but you gotta be careful of these interlopers, things like tib posterior and perineus longus that um, can be kind of confusing. Here's the short axis views on that same, same athlete here. So here's a coronal um, reference image, C1, M2, here's Liz Frank's ligament. So as we cruise through that, you should be able to see that there's interruption of it. Or at least there's heterogeneity of it and there's too much signal within it. And I would admit that in the professional athletes, you know, we have a lot of injuries that end up being like in the moderate category, you know, not, you know, not to, to give a lot of kind of flexibility in terms of management and, um, and uh, expectations. Okay, see all the edema around here, see the dorsal capsule looks like that's disrupted as well. So for Liz Frank injury, the surgical fixation is based on things like diastasis, um, do they have a fracture or not, um, instability? And similarly, MRIs used to confirm the diagnosis, to grade it to some extent, and to look for other injuries. But the clinical picture is probably the most important thing in terms of uh, determining, treat determining treatment. And um, radiography and stress radiography is often the only imaging that may be done in these patients um, <clears throat> in terms of deciding their management. Okay, so thanks for your attention on that, that one, and um, happy to take any uh, questions about that.